businesses don't improve themselves, pe- people improve businesses. Uh, intensive horticulture, as as the listeners will know, it feels like a treadmill at times. And no sooner have we got the last crop out that we're that we're back in there and starting again. And it's trying to find the breathing space to tackle something that's more than just business as usual. Welcome back to the Vegilog podcast, a dialogue about the Australian vegetable industry from Ausveg. I'm Alex Lastruk. Lean management is a systematic approach to optimizing efficiency by minimizing waste and maximizing value for businesses. Originally developed by Toyota for their production system, Lean has been successfully applied to a wide range of industries, including energy, healthcare, government and agriculture. Simon Drum, the owner and managing director of PSVC Advisory, has previously held positions at Horde Innovation, Harvest Moon and Premier Fresh. He spent 25 years developing his knowledge and management expertise of agribusiness value chains through strategic, commercial, operational and advisory roles. His intricate understanding of operational dynamics helps him transform his clients' businesses into more productive, efficient and profitable operations. Join us as we explore how lean management can be applied to benefit vegetable growing businesses. Well, uh, good morning, Simon, and welcome to the podcast. Morning, Alex. Thanks for having me. Simon, first of all, for anybody who might be unfamiliar, can you please provide a bit of an overview of what lean management is, as well as how you first came to learn of it and its application in agriculture? Sure. Uh, So, Alex, in 2010, uh, my family and I moved to Tasmania and I started working for a big vegetable business called Harvest Moon. And at the time, the dollar was at parity and our export markets in Southeast Asia were under an awful lot of pressure, uh, particularly from China. And Harvest Moon paid all their staff on an hourly rate and in order to stay competitive in those markets, we had to improve productivity or, or, or think very seriously about exiting them. So fortunately, I guess for me, uh, just down the road in Burnie in Tasmania, Caterpillar were making underground mining equipment and that business had been applying lean uh, for about five or six years at the time. And the managing director and I went for a tour through that factory and I could see, I guess, what the application might have been in an agricultural context. And we went away and engaged some consultants and and started applying it in growing vegetables. So what is lean? Uh, It's probably made most famous by Toyota. Uh, They, I guess, didn't conceive of all of the tools and techniques, but they they certainly lifted its profile. And uh, I guess what's really important to note is that it's not a it's not an automotive thing. It's not a manufacturing thing. Uh, it's a it's a management system that's about improving the efficiency and effectiveness of systems and processes. So how do we produce better quality using less resources? And so the application of it in an agricultural context, um, I guess most people immediately think of a factory, again, uh, probably from its, from its origins. Um, and we did too. From a Harvest Moon perspective, that was the first place that we were looking. It was a factory that, that probably needed a birthday and some circumstances changed in terms of what was going on with the factories and, and the rebuild didn't happen. And then we started to apply it in the actual growing process. And initially, the first couple of years, that was that was where we had the greatest cut through. Um, but ultimately, we applied it all the way through the operational part of the business and in areas like finance. Following on from that, how do you see that lean principles can be used to address the unique challenges and dynamics of the horticulture industry, including seasonal variations and perishable products? 
Yeah, I might, I might talk to the seasonality first. I've been involved in in lean from a from a management perspective and from a consulting perspective for nearly fifteen years. The the greatest difference between applying it to a bit to agriculture and and other businesses is the seasonality and it, it's not the weather um, it's really what implications seasonality has for our workforce so businesses don't improve themselves Pe- people improve businesses uh, intensive horticulture as as the listeners will know it feels like a treadmill at times and no sooner have we got the last crop out that we're that we're back in there and starting again and it's trying to find the breathing space to tackle something that's more than just business as usual that that's the that's the challenge uh in terms of its application and applicability um you know, I said a little bit earlier that the the car manufacturers have made it famous. Um, it's been applied to virtually every industry, um, healthcare, government, um, IT, banking, um, all, all over the world. So it, it's getting past the idea that it's that it's a factory thing. And if you've got a process, um, then there's every chance that that the application of the lean tools and techniques are applicable. With the economic viability of the Australian vegetable industry at its lowest point, how can lean management help vegetable growing businesses find efficiencies and become more financially sustainable? Yeah, look, lean looks at businesses from a different perspective. Um, so the the objective is to to lift the quality and use less resources to to create that quality um, the two most significant types of waste from a from a lean perspective in agriculture are overproduction which we all know um, all too much about and and defective raw material so if we if we're growing more than our customer wants then and, and particularly if we're harvesting more than our customer wants we we're, we're pushing volume through a through a process then um, we're probably not harvesting on time we're probably driving some over maturity into that raw material we're inevitably adding more labor cost in a packing or grading perspective we're certainly going to be carrying more inventory in our supply chain, filling up fridges, adding to fork movements, um, and I guess at a um, at an endpoint perspective, we could be selling product to someone that we really oughtn't be because we're trying to move it, and then we start to have issues with whether the product's going to be paid for, um, chasing money. It, it it just snowballs, all starting with growing more than than our markets said they wanted. And then if we're growing defective raw material, so product those customers don't want, same deal, it, it's got to be removed or engineered out of that process downstream. So they're, they're probably the two biggest offenders. Um, and so... How do we how do we use lean to try and improve that? Um, applying it specifically to our production system, so getting the timing right, uh, getting the quantities as close to what market demand is, and and driving up that pack out. So if we plant a hundred seedlings, we're we're cutting and packing a hundred seedlings, not 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 planting a hundred and putting all the inputs in and only and only cutting 40 percent 50 percent there's an awful lot of waste in that can you take us through some of the key steps in implementing lean principles and how important is an organization's management to this process yeah so I've got lots of first-hand experience with 
with what the management's role is. As I said a little bit earlier, businesses don't improve themselves, their, their people do. More specifically, when we're trying to improve systems and processes, the people that own those systems and processes need to be involved in, in the improvement. In agriculture, that's our typically it's our permanent workforce. So it's agronomists, it's farm managers, um, it's leading hands, it's irrigation managers, um, that, that spine of management that runs all the way through our organisation. And if they're to tackle what could be described as a discretionary activity around trying to improve or change a process, then the first constraint is time. The second constraint's bandwidth. So we can have time, but we can be cooked and and not in a mental state to be taking on something something extra. Um, and I guess the third is that leadership support. So it's not seen as um, you're not working if you're not moving a machine or driving product through a process. Um, you might be standing there and observing a process and, and that's about starting to improve it. And I guess the other part, the other big part of our workforce is obviously the seasonal piece. And if, if that seasonal workforce is not as suitable as it should be, not stable, not capable, not productive, um, it's the permanent workforce that that get it in the neck first. That's the layer of the business that's got to compensate if if we haven't got our seasonal workforce sorted out. So so leadership's responsibility is is double barreled. Um, they need to take real responsibility for making sure that our seasonal workforce is performing, stable. If the turnstile's running on people coming in and out of the business, then the permanent workforce is absorbed training compensating on quality, that they've got no bandwidth to actually tackle what we're trying to improve. So um, so that workforce design um, and then the leadership that they provide, the space that they provide that permanent workforce is, is critical. Can you share an example of successful lean management implementation in an Australian agribusiness and the specific strategies and outcomes achieved? I'll use the I use an example from from Harvest Moon. Uh, our our carrot business in two thousand and ten, uh, it had been an export orientated business, specifically aimed at Japan. So the Japanese market was was very different from from the Australian domestic market. What they were looking for it was a bigger, bolder carrot in some cases there were different different genetics um, and they don't consume carrots like like we do it's more about garnish on the plate than than quite how we consume it so the crop profile that we were growing was geared towards that market as opposed to the market that the business had had now become centered on um, so for all the volume of carrots that we were moving uh, a, a smaller percentage were suitable for domestic supermarket prepacks. So it goes to this market alignment thing. We, we weren't really growing what, what our target market wanted. Um, and so the, the first step was, okay, what's, what's the preferred profile? And then how do we re-engineer every element in that growing process to get as high a percentage of the raw material that we would handle suitable for the highest paying customer. Um, and and so that, that involved everything from, from different groundwork, um, different planting strategies, um, better control on timing in terms of when crop came in so that we didn't have volatility in, in the volume that we were trying to handle through the supply chain. Um, and so you know, over the course of three seasons, four seasons, um, we, we slowly but surely engineered a lot of the waste out of that growing process and out of our 
factory. Um, and ultimately, we were growing 20% less hectares and we were carting 30 or 40% less raw material from, from field to, to factory. Um, we, we use 30% less hours and, and machine time to generate more income. So, so that market alignment, what exactly does the customer want? Have we got our growing process really aligned? Is every bit of the raw material that we're bringing in suitable for our, for our best customer? Um, and yeah, it's not, you don't do it overnight. We've, we've got cropping cycles and, um, it, it's a, as the lingo sounds, it's a continuous improvement process. For an agribusiness wanting to start their lean journey, what advice do you have and how long does the process take? Yeah, there's no shortcuts. Um, so as, as I just mentioned, lean is about, is about continuous improvement as all the, as all the listeners would appreciate the, the market in which we're operating our costs of doing business, the different forces acting on the business are changing all of the time. Um, it, it really is about, is this something that we're going to embrace as business as usual? Um, and, and embed in what we do and the approach that in the approach that we take. Um, in terms of how to tackle it, all all of the businesses are under under pressure, under margin pressure, under time pressure, under seasonal pressure. We don't have the um, the opportunity to push push stop on the music reset. Um, so the work I do now is is about working with businesses to start that process and in terms of how people learn and the and the practical um, part of that the best way to learn this stuff is by doing it so so what does that translate into find one two three processes in a business that we know that we can improve nut out what specifically we're going to try and tackle and then start to apply a sample of the lean tools to deal with those problems and real problems with real financial impact. Um, tackle those and then the next time we get more breathing space, tackle some more. So so that, that process, you know, some businesses that I've been working with for four or five years you know, the first season, they they became competent in three or four tools. Um, we get the next breathing space after harvest finishes. How do we apply those three or four tools in two or three more departments? Um, and and then how do we feed in the next tool and the next tool? And we're slowly but surely building the capacity in the business. And they're, and they're becoming more widely spread through the business and and before you know it we get a snowball effect um, I guess the other point I'd make about the implementation and and I found this out the hard way the constraint is the workforce so the idea that we'll go off and 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 learn a bit about lean and just come back and get it done um, there's some naivety attached to that and, and I can say that from first-hand experience, we've got to build the capacity and the bandwidth of our permanent workforce. And as we said a little bit earlier, in order to be able to provide them with that bandwidth, the seasonal workforce needs to be stable, capable, um, such that it, it's not constantly pulling the permanent workforce off course. So you have to do the things in, in parallel um, and yeah, then you've got to sustain the effort. Well, thank you, Simon. It was great to pick your brain about lean management's application in the horticulture industry. Thanks very much, Alex, for the opportunity. You've been listening to the Vegalog podcast.
Don't forget to subscribe and give the podcast a rating and review to help others find us. Vegilog is produced by Ozveg, the peak industry buddy for Australian vegetable, potato and onion growers. You can find more news and information from Ozveg at ozveg.com.au, on our social media channels or in the Australian Grower magazine. Thank you for listening. <laughs>